Hello everyone. This is Chidanan from Kratz Infotech NG. Welcome to this tutorial on GitLab integration with the Sonar Cube. GitLab is uh, nothing but a Git server, but um, it has progressed far beyond that in recent times and uh, it is considered as a DevSecOps platform. So what I plan to demonstrate in this tutorial is to use the GitLab server as a source code repository, spin up a GitLab runner, everything on the cloud hosted GitLab server and uh, analyze the source code that is written in uh, Java. It's a Maven based Java project and push it onto SonarQ. Um, this is exactly what I plan to demonstrate. I will use the cloud hosted GitLab runner which is provided free of cost for um, all registered users and then I will put out the sonar cube on my local machine. I plan to use version 10.41 the community edition of uh, sonar cube. Now sonar cube is nothing but a server that is good at analyzing or static analyzing the code base. Sonar cube comes in different uh, flavors and uh, license. I plan to use the community edition of sonar cube. The only prerequisite for sonar cube is that uh, you need a compatible JDK. So let me bring up my sonar cube server first. I've just downloaded this binary. Um, Windows, or if I open up a command prompt, let me also check what version of uh, Java I have. Okay, I have a JDK 1. Dot or 17 GDK and um, that's all that is uh, required for you to run sonar cube so there's a small batch file this is how I prefer to run sonar cube okay I know what is the problem I have um, some other application that is uh, running on a particular port DAP DP agent Right. Okay, this will take a while for it to come up, maybe a couple of minutes. So let me pause the recording and then come back once uh, Sonar Cube is up and running. It took a few minutes for my Sonar Cube to come up. So let me minimize this and um, Sonar Cube by default runs on the port 9000 and the first time when you log in it will ask you for a username password um, you'll have to um, or rather the default username and password is admin admin you'll have to change it first all right so out here on sonar cube i have a bunch of um, um, projects already um, that has been um, tested or uh, on which the analysis has done but if at all I need to put up a new project that needs to be analyzed by GitLab, let me kind of begin the activity by creating a project. All right, let me say a local project. I'll give a name for this. I will just give a name as GitLab scan uh, demo, some name. Uh, you will find a kind of a project key also that gets created typically based upon the project name. Unless, of course, the project name is a duplicate. Um, let me change this to master because I know for a fact that the repository that I'm going to use has got the master branch. Okay, global setting is all right. Create the project. Okay, now how do you want to analyze your repository? So there's a beautiful integration or um, very, very intuitive uh, instructions uh, for you to analyze or set up analysis using different CI servers. So with Jenkins, with GitHub Actions, with Bitbucket Pipeline, with GitLab CI. Now this is what we're going to use. Very clearly the instructions as to what needs to be done is put out here in a very, very intuitive way. All that you got to do is follow these instructions without making any mistake. I'm being prompted now to go ahead and add some SonarCube token 
to the GitLab repository, whichever I would want to scan because we need to have an integration between GitLab runner and our Sonar Cube server. So the first and foremost thing that GitLab runner would need is a Sonar token. So let me open up gitlab.com and uh, go to my repository. I have a bunch of repositories. Um, all of them or most of them are public repositories. I will leave the link to this repository in the description section of the tutorial. You guys can refer to it in case anybody is interested. So now this is a simple Maven project that I have. So he's asking me to go ahead and go to the settings CI CD variables. So if at all I go to the setting 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 CI CD and uh, go to variables variable of runner I guess CI CD CI CD variables okay yes these variable here all right so I had already added one couple of things just because you know let me go ahead and delete this first and then forgot to all right so what it is asking me to is go ahead and add a variable with the key as sonar token so let me go and add a variable the key or the name should be sonar token okay and uh, in the value feed enter an existing token or create a new one let's go ahead and create a new one this sounds okay so let me create this token let me copy this token okay so let me come here to the value let me paste this value so this is a kind of a secret uh, so it is better to uncheck the product variable and check the mask variable mask variable Yes, mask variable should be checked. Protected variable should be unchecked. All right, that's what it says. All right, now let me go and add this variable. That's one variable. Now the second one variable is the Sonar Cube URL. Now my Sonar Cube is running on localhost. Uh, pretty much, I would not be able to connect this to the runner, which will come up on the GitLab cloud. But nonetheless, let me copy this so, uh, key sonar cube host so it is asking me to add one more add another variable um, the key is this and the value it is saying localhost 9000 uh, this uh, definitely won't be reachable so what i'll try to do is i will somehow try to oops i have a beautiful utility called uh, zrock not bad read me okay what is the command let me try to expose um, my uh, local 9000 whatever is running on the 9000 port as a public uh, url so this is what i should do 9000 is my uh, local host 9000 that is where my sonar cube is running so i use a small tool called ZROK. Uh, I used to use something else earlier, but that has become a licensed product now. So I use this. This is nothing but an open source uh, solution. Um, just to ensure that my Sonar Cube server is uh, accessible to the runner that will come up on the GitLab cloud. Now this is the URL. Uh, let me just copy this. Let me first paste this just to check if this URL is accessible. So this URL should take me to my Sonar Cube server. It may be very slow, but um, it should be fine. All right. So now this is the um, value. Okay. So in the value, I should enter this one. And what else does it say? Uncheck the protected variable. Leave the mask variable unchecked. Mask variable is okay. Uh, protected variable. Um, uncheck the protected variable. All right, so we just added two variables, one for the host URL, so that uh, the runner knows where to reach out to the Sonar Cube URL. And if you see the <clears throat> the variable name is in a very very specific format, okay. And then a Sonar token. Now these two things are done. 
Now, what does it say is like, uh, what more information do you have about the project? Is it a Maven based, Gradle based, .NET? Yes, my project is Maven based. It is also asking me to copy a bunch of things in the properties file. Okay, so in the formula XML, it is uh, asking me to put forth what is the project key, what is the project name, and if at all this quality gate may not be required, so I will not put the quality gate. Okay, I will just copy these two. So this has to be, I mean, there are multiple ways of doing this, but this is what is recommended out here. So if I have to come back to the source code, in the Pomod XML, not a really um, good thing to do because uh, if at all I am a CI/CD developer, um, the Pomod XML is not something that I would like to modify. It's usually the engineering team which has got ownership of the Pomod XML file. But um, in this demo, let's kind of do it that way. Where should I add that properties under the properties section? All right, this is uh, this one properties here. Is that the only one place? where we have properties yeah that's the only one place where we have properties so all right let me search for it yeah this is the only place so i will add after this i will add this sonar dot project key and uh, the project name okay this should be fine Okay, let me update the formula XML file. Okay, now that being done, um, it is also going to give us the GitLab hyphen CI dot YML. Now, for those of you who know the GitLab um, CI, in order to kickstart a pipeline automatically on the GitLab environment, you'll have to put in a file. The file name has to be exactly like this dot GitLab hyphen ci.yml it is also giving us the exact content as to what should be there in that repository i mean what is that we should put in that pipeline so let me try to copy and paste this and see if at all this is sufficient to enable the gitlab runner to talk to my sonar cube server let me create i don't think so i have this yml file so let me go in and create a yml file which will trigger off my pipeline and this has to be exactly at the root folder of the repository this is where is the repository so i will say add add a new file all right the file name should be okay it's already there now, if at all you know this, it will give you all kinds of templates that we would want in order to, you know, kind of help us out. But we already have our pipeline code. Okay, let me copy and paste this. In case, if I take a look at this, it has got two stages. One is called SonarCube Check, SonarCube Vulnerability Report. Um, it is using Maven. Maven with, uh, I think this should be JDK 17, um, SonarCube project url uh, git depth uh, mvn verify sonar colon sonar and um, this is all the um, the vulnerability report we be attached there that's also okay artifact uh, you know or let me know take a look at what all is there and um, let me just go ahead and modify this and see if automatically a job gets kicked off in my GitLab runner. You'll find that um, our pipeline is kicked off and um, sonar cube check is happening. That is the first stage that I had put out. It's going to pull out a Maven repository, I mean, a Maven um, based Docker image. Okay, this seems to be a little slow. Let me just pause the video and then come back once um, it is ready. It took some time, about uh, three minutes for this whole job to run. Maybe because um, my SonarCube server is exposed through a US server, the traffic might have been very slow. Um, so, but let me check the job. So there is this two stages that is mentioned. Okay, so all the information about the 
repository has been passed to the sonar cube server and you can go ahead and put up some sort of a quality gates on the sonar cube server um, well i didn't want you to do that uh, there's also a vulnerability report that is put out uh, all of them are you know, most of them I mean, points to the sonar cube server um, all right that sounds good let me come back to my okay there you go my report on my sonar cube server for the gitlab scan that we just now did two minutes ago um, projects uh, how to sort this uh, yeah okay sort uh, in the descending order you see here just three minutes ago the scan kind of happened whatever was there good things bad things in the project is all highlighted here including the reliability security and the code coverage so my which part of my application code has been covered by a test case now the coverage is very low um, the repository did not contain really good code but then the idea was just to demonstrate how easy and simple that is to go ahead and um, configure a repository on the GitLab server to be analyzed by a sonar cube so if you remember what what I did I went to the sonar cube server put out an information about a particular project and then asked it to be integrated with GitLab runner all the information uh, regarding the kind of uh, URL that GitLab runner will have to reach out to sonar cube and a token and a bunch of project specific uh, information for Java and Maven it's just the key and um, the project name and the key for projects having um, any other programming language a bunch of other uh, configuration should also be passed on but then uh, for Maven project as simple as that and uh, sonar cube also gives us the GitLab runner YML file or the YML file that needs to be put in to our Git, GitLab server to put up our pipeline. I hope uh, you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching my video. Please consider subscribing and liking my video. Thank you so much.